Who should apply for Nova Scotia's Entrepreneur Immigration Program? What are the pros and cons? What are the requirements? What are the steps involved? Today, we will answer these questions. Hi, my name is Rashid Ali. I'm a regulated Canadian immigration consultant from Canada. Regulated Canadian immigration consultants or RCICs are the only immigration consultants for Canada who can give you immigration or citizenship advice for a fee. In order to become an RCIC, you need to go through a certain educational path. There are certain licensing requirements and you also need to be a Canadian citizen or permanent resident. That's why the natural habitat for most RCICs is Canada. You'll find that most of the RCICs uh, operate and they have their practice within Canada. Through this channel, I share advice on Canadian immigration so you don't have to spend a lot of time and energy getting information from inauthentic sources. This video is episode 7 of my business immigration series where we will discuss different business immigration programs for Canada. If you missed the previous episodes, I will link them up in the description and here so you can check those out. So why Nova Scotia? Nova Scotia is Latin for New Scotland. French colonists established the first European settlement here in 1605. When you think of Nova Scotia, what image comes to mind? Perhaps you see the image of a lighthouse, Peggy's Cove, which is one of the most photographed lighthouses in the world. If you're a foodie, it might be an image of lobsters because 50,000 lobsters are fished out of Nova Scotia waters each year. If you're a nature lover, 12 known species of whale have been sighted in Nova Scotia. And if you're an athlete, Bay of Fundy is the home to world's largest tides. On the low tide, you can even sit on the ocean floor. If you love outdoors, the Kibot Trail is ranked as one of the most scenic drives in the world. If you're used to living near the sea with more than 13,000 kilometers of coastline, no point in Nova Scotia is more than 60 kilometers from the sea. If you're a history buff, you might know that 150 unclaimed victims from the Titanic were laid to rest in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Enough about stats, I won't bore you anymore. If you want to learn more about Nova Scotia, some of the key stats, I will link a fact book about Nova Scotia in the description of the video below. You can download it and read it later on. Let's talk business now. Who should consider applying for Nova Scotia's entrepreneur stream? There are so many options, about 16 provincial and territorial entrepreneur programs. So why would anyone choose Nova Scotia over all of those programs? So the most important criteria, if you want to apply for Nova Scotia's entrepreneur program, is that you must want to live here in Nova Scotia. Don't think that you can just apply for this program and as soon as you get your PR, you'll move to another province. Maybe you can move to another province because by law, a Canadian permanent resident is a permanent resident. and you can live and work anywhere in Canada. But if you are applying with this intention, I wouldn't recommend choosing Nova Scotia. Because if your intent is just to show that you will start your business in Nova Scotia, this might be considered misrepresentation. So only consider this province if you really want to live here and do your business here. Now let's look at some of the numbers. The minimum net worth required for Nova Scotia is 600,000 Canadian dollars. 150,000 is one of the lowest minimum investment requirements of out of all the provincial entrepreneur programs. So that is one of the good attractions about Nova Scotia's entrepreneur immigration program. The other attraction is the low language threshold. If you have a score of CLB5 in English or in French language exams, you will be eligible for this program. Whereas with some of the other programs, for example, Express Entry or Owner Operator and then Express Entry, you do need to have a minimum score of CLB7. So that is another one of the pros of this program, like most other provincial programs. With a low language score, you can still qualify. As far as education is concerned, you need to have, at the minimum, high school education. You will, by the way, need to produce an educational credentials assessment report for your education. And like most entrepreneur immigration programs, you need to have the relevant experience. So if you've been a business owner, you need to have at least three years of business ownership experience with at least one third equity in your business. And if you are a senior manager, you need to have at least five years of senior managerial experience. So these were some of the requirements on a higher level. There are certain types of businesses that will not be considered eligible for Nova Scotia's entrepreneur program. Some of the businesses in this list are common with Ontario's list of programs which were ineligible. By the way, if you want to watch the video on Ontario's entrepreneur immigration program, I will link it up here 
and also in the description. So the following list of businesses are ineligible for Nova Scotia. Businesses that are conducted remotely from another Canadian province, property rental, investment and leasing activities, real estate construction, development, brokerage, insurance brokerage or business brokerage unless the applicant can prove that their project in this area will have a compelling benefit to the province of Nova Scotia. Any professional services or self-employed businesses requiring licensing or accreditation, payday loans, check cashing, money changing and cash machines, pawnbrokers, credit unions, home-based businesses, unless the applicant can prove their business will have a compelling benefit to the province of Nova Scotia, cooperatives, investments into a business operated primarily for the purpose of driving passive investment income, businesses involved in the production, distribution or sale of explicit products or services, joint ventures between Nova Scotia's provincial program applicants, any other types of businesses that by association would tend to bring the government of Nova Scotia to distribute. As you can clearly see from this list, if you wanted to start a business where you would operate it remotely, so if you had plans where you would set up the business in Nova Scotia, but run it from another province, say Ontario or British Columbia, etc., you can do that. You have to actively manage it, you have to live in the province, and it can't be a home-based business, among other things. Now, there are some specific requirements for the business. First of all, you as the applicant should have at least one-third ownership of your business in Nova Scotia. You as the applicant must provide active and day-to-day -day ongoing management to your business. So you can't just invest money and go away or manage it passively. And as I mentioned before, you must manage this business from that location within Nova Scotia. So even within the province, you can't go to another city and manage your business remotely. You can't do that. The business must create significant economic benefit to Nova Scotia. For example, increasing value-added manufacturing or processing, exports, destination tourism, research and development and technology commercialization, developing innovative approaches to traditional businesses, transferring technology and specialized knowledge to Nova Scotia, or providing products or services to an underserved local or regional market. Don't be confused by all of these criteria. Once we go into the details of the scoring criteria in the next video, you will have a better understanding of these criteria. Now, when you're purchasing an existing business, all of these requirements will apply. But when you're creating a new business, starting a new business from scratch, in addition to these requirements, there are some additional requirements. First of all, you must create at least one job for a Canadian citizen or permanent resident. If you're buying a business, creation of this one job is not mandatory. But if you're creating a business from scratch, you have to create a job. And again, this is for a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident. You cannot give this job to your family members who immigrated with you, for example, your spouse or your dependent children. Also, if you're buying an existing business in Nova Scotia, there are some more things you need to consider. First of all, that business must be owned by the same business owner for the last five years. One of the reasons for this is that people should not buy and sell businesses just for the sake of uh, immigration. It shouldn't be an immigration investment scheme of sorts. All applicants who are buying an existing business must visit Nova Scotia. You must do an exploratory visit and meet the owners of the existing business. You must also provide evidence that you made reasonable efforts to get a fair market value of the business. The business must also be active and you must also maintain jobs for the existing employees of the business with the same terms and conditions. So you can't buy an existing business and then cut the wages or lay off employees. You must retain the existing conditions. So these were some of the requirements for your business. Now let's look at the steps for this entrepreneurial immigration program. There are six main steps. The first step is to submit an expression of interest. But before you go ahead and submit an expression of interest, I would recommend that you visit Nova Scotia. Even if you're not buying an existing business, um, even if you're starting a new business from scratch, an exploratory visit is not mandatory, but you should still do it to get an idea of the business conditions, of the culture, to meet up with different stakeholders. So you would do an exploratory visit, which is mandatory for buying an existing business. It is not mandatory for starting a new business. You would do that and then officially the first step is to submit an expression of interest. An expression of interest is an online application. It is free. Once you submit an expression of interest, you remain in the pool for 12 months. Step two is invitation to apply and document submission. If you're shortlisted and you're invited to apply for Nova Scotia's entrepreneur program, you're invited to submit a detailed application, you will go ahead and submit some key documents. Two of these key documents are your business establishment plan, 
your net worth verification report, and the other two are your application forms and other supporting documents. In this application, you must stay consistent with your EOI. If you change a lot of information at this step, your application will be refused. You must also not do misrepresentation. And through your net worth verification report, it must also be clear that you accumulated your net worth legally. Step three is interview, performance agreement, and work permit. You will be invited for an in-person interview, most probably in Nova Scotia, but I've also seen examples where people have gone to their local visa office. After the interview, if you pass this interview, you will sign a performance agreement. In this performance agreement, you will agree on certain terms and conditions. For example, the amount of money you will invest, the type of business, the location of the business, etc. I will link a sample business performance agreement in the description of the video. After that, you will apply for a work permit. By the way, once Nova Scotia requests you to come for an in-person interview, you will have 60 days. So you must make sure you have a TRV in advance so you don't spend a lot of time getting TRV approved and you can do it quickly. Step four is arriving in Nova Scotia and starting your business. Once you arrive in Nova Scotia, you will have 60 days to meet the Nova Scotia Office of Immigration team and you will also share a signed arrival report. I will also share that arrival report. Step five is requesting Nova Scotia to nominate you for PR. So you arrived as a temporary worker in Nova Scotia, you started your business, you must operate this business for at least a year. In this year, your dependents must also live with you in Nova Scotia. So you can't have your spouse, your dependent children live in another province, they must be living with you in Nova Scotia. Once you do that, you can then request for a PR nomination. As a part of request for this nomination, you will include two reports. One will be an audit report for your business, and the second one will be a special purpose report. The purpose of this special report is to demonstrate that your business will be sustainable. Once the province nominates you for PR, your business has a favorable environment to thrive, to continue to grow. Step six and the final step is to apply for PR. Once the province nominates you, you have six months to apply for PR. But the story doesn't end here. You must continue to meet the requirements of this program until you get your PR. So you must continue to live within the province with your dependent family members. You must continue to run your business. That's why in the beginning I said only choose this program if you intend to live in this province. Because if you're only doing it for the sake of PR and you're not interested in living in Nova Scotia, it might get very difficult for you. So now let's look at the high level timeline of all the steps I described. Once you submit your EOI and you get an invitation to apply, 20 days after receiving your invitation to apply, you will need to select a designated net worth verifier and notify Nova Scotia Office of Immigration that you've chosen someone, they will work on your net worth verification. 90 days after your ITA, you will submit a complete application form with supporting documents and business establishment plan. So after getting an ITA, you still have 90 days to submit these documents. 180 days after receiving your ITA, you will submit your net worth verification report. So since this can take a long time, you have been given more time by the province to submit this net worth verification report. So almost six months. You will then be called for an in-person interview and this time can vary. Once you've been called for an in-person interview, you will have a maximum of 60 days to appear for this interview. After that, you will have 15 days to sign the business performance agreement and 60 days after the issuance of entrepreneur approval letter, you have to apply for the work permit. And within three 65 days of the issuance of your entrepreneur approval letter, you must arrive in Nova Scotia. That is the maximum. You can obviously come as soon as possible. You must meet the Nova Scotia Office of Immigration staff within 60 days of arrival. You must run your business for at least a year before you can request for nomination. You must apply for PR within six months of nomination by the province. And you must inform Nova Scotia within 30 business days of receiving your COPR or confirmation of permanent residence. So this was the timeline for Nova Scotia's entrepreneur immigration program journey from start to the time you get your PR. So now that you have an idea of what this program is all about, what do you think about the pros and cons of Nova Scotia's entrepreneur immigration? Let me know in the comments below. In my opinion, one of the pros is definitely getting to live in such a beautiful province which is so close to the coast you get to enjoy that environment you get to enjoy that culture other than that obviously you have to invest less compared to some of the other provinces the minimum investment is 150,000. the language requirements are also uh, less compared to some of the federal programs like express entry you only need to have clb5 plus there is not a lot of emphasis on your education when we talk about cons one of the cons that i can think of is common with most provincial entrepreneur programs and that is the uncertainty the policies of provincial entrepreneur programs can change quite rapidly there is a quota as well where there are a limited number of seats 
you're competing with other applicants and you never know if you'll be successful or not. But we'll try to decrease some of this uncertainty in the next video where we'll talk about the scoring system and how to evaluate your own scores. But still there is this uncertainty and their application review criteria can change. So even though you've submitted the application, you went through all of that hard work, uh, you might not be successful. And if you're someone who loves to live in metropolitans uh, in areas with a lot of cultural diversity, big areas like GTA, living in Nova Scotia might not be ideal for you but Nova Scotia's entrepreneur immigration program is not the only one there are a lot more programs owner operator LMI is one great program where you can start your own business and get either 50 or 200 points and use those points for your express entry application I link the owner operator LMIA video here and in the description you might also be eligible for an intra company transfer I will also link the intra company transfer video here and in the description. Stay tuned for the next video on Nova Scotia's entrepreneur immigration program. But if you found value in this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, turn on the bell icon so you can receive notifications when I upload more videos on Canada's immigration programs, especially the business immigration programs. I'll also link a guide in the description of the video where you can learn more about the province, the stats, the demographics, the major industries, the major cities, all of that information. You can use the link, you can also subscribe, you can also opt in to my mailing list where we can take this journey together. I can keep you updated and I'd love to hear back from you. Whether or not you choose to hire me for your immigration journey, I would still love to stay connected with you. So you can find that link in the description. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.